Hey, what's going on guys? It's Will. Hopefully you're having an amazing day today. So in this video, we're going to be covering the top three steps to take to monetize your music. For those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Will. I cover a lot of music business tips. I run a series of music businesses, including our releases that we do every single week. And I run a lot of different uh, smaller companies that are either music publishing, music uh, promotion, and music software and i also just like to make music all the time so really aligned a lot of my life with that and that's uh, how i started how i started i sold my first song uh not my first song but my, the first song i sold i sold for ten thousand dollars uh to a company called invisline and then ever since then i've just put money into music and growing the business consulting and working on marketing to help labels and myself be able to grow uh our music businesses and our brands so hopefully you guys enjoy uh in this video I'm going to share with you guys something that I wish I realized earlier. Honestly, it's tough to go back sometimes and say, All right, this is something, but I'm like, you know what? You probably are struggling with this right now. So hopefully this video helps you along the way. And the first thing, you know, I was just talking with an artist who had 200,000 monthly listeners on Spotify. And essentially what he was telling me is he's like, I'm trying to go all in and I've made that decision, but I'm still confused why I'm, I feel like I'm working my tail off, but I haven't been able to make money, real money because 200,000 streams a month was around 250 bucks. I think he said every single month. And obviously, you know, that's not going to pay the rent that you don't get rich off 250 bucks a month. Right. And so making money with music, um, you know, there's like a fan base that you start and you might not, you know, get money in your bank account, but you build this, you know, goodwill, this social uh, status, this this following of people that are interested in your music. And that can happen. And sometimes people start off with big audiences or small audiences when they start making money from their music. It depends. But but let me let me share with you this. So there's that friend that I had and we're talking about it. And I'm like, it's it's your market. That's the reason that you're not making it. Because what happened to me, why did I make ten thousand dollars selling a song? It's because I was in a different market uh, than what he was in. And there's all these different markets in the music industry, right? So, so we have a software market, we have a plug-in market, we have the market where you make music consistently and try and grow your catalog and get streams. It's kind of like what this friend does. But in that process, which market is going to make you the most? So this is the first step uh, to the music monetization is choosing the right markets for your music. So you have all these markets you can choose. Spotify, you can put it out on Apple Music, you can put it on YouTube, different platforms you can choose. But at the end of the day, you wanna choose the one that is a market that gives you the most leverage, that pays you in proportion to the amount of work that you're putting in. And so that's just something that basically I, I talked with them, I was like, you're putting in a massive amount of work right now. You're working with producers, you're working to pay engineers, you're paying for marketing and you're trying to live on streams. Do you see how that's like difficult? Like you're putting all this work in to get thousands of streams and you're only making this much, right? So in this market over here, when, for example, I found a company that wanted to sell, that wanted to buy music for their company as a jingle and I sold them the song and they're willing to pay a lot because it's kind of a rich person problem, right? They're, they're a big company and they're trying to figure it out. And they're like, we need some music marketing. Yeah, we'll pay you. And it's not a big deal for them. They're a billion dollar company. That's one market. But the market I'm talking about that's highly applicable to every artist that's trying to make a living and make, have success and make money from their music and be consistent is the right market, the direct to consumer music sales. So direct music sales. So you have streaming over here, you have direct music sales. Direct music sales, this is where you're going to actually grow your music by selling or grow your bank account by selling music, selling copies of your music, selling exclusive access to music, selling uh, fan community and group chat access, creating basically a place where people can get a better experience of your music, more value than just listening to the song. And you might say, well, that's great. What platforms do I start? That's number two. So now, you know, choose your market, you get a market where you're going to make more money. 
And actually, before I go into that, one more comparison. You get 200,000 people to listen to your song like this friend, and you get $200. Over here, you might only get 200 people, not 200,000. 200 people, just 200 to listen to your music. And over here, at $25 a piece for your music offer, you're now making $4,000 to $5,000 as opposed to $200 for 200,000 people. Do, do you see the difference? So that's the direct music sales, you get more leverage and it takes less effort to get a greater output from your music. You might say, well, not everyone's gonna buy my music. Great, there's a prime segment of your music audience that you'll build over time that are your fans that will want to see you succeed, that will want to buy your music. There's music buyers and they'll buy all types of different online, either digital, digital or physical merch. So that's number, that's number one is getting in the right market. Number two is having the right platforms. And so number two is being on the right platforms. Some artists find that they grow extremely well if they are in the age range of 25 to 34 or somewhere in there, they grow extremely well on YouTube, on Instagram. Other people that are in the range of you know, 15 years old to 25 might find they grow extremely well on TikTok. Other people that are older from 35 to 70 years old might find, and this is all subjective, right? It could be different for everyone, but they might find that it's easier for them to grow on Facebook, okay? So it doesn't mean you have to grow on those platforms and that's where you should go, but I'm saying pick the right platforms. If I'm trying to grow, um, there was an artist, they were saying, yeah, I'm putting out all my music on SoundCloud and on SoundCloud. But he wasn't just picking a platform like TikTok or or Facebook or, or Instagram to actually put the music out there and engage fans and, and grow that small audience, that prime segment of people that are music buyers that are happy to support you. They're deep pocketed music buyers. They, they want to buy into artists. That's what they do. Like they love it. There's so many fans out there that want to do that. And then it's like, and it's only a small number of your audience, but it's like, you're not going to get that on SoundCloud. So you got to choose the right platforms, choose where you're going to be able to engage them. And this really comes down to in the right platforms. Ultimately, wherever you're starting, you want to go from there into um, email and text or WhatsApp. You want to get people into a place where you can uh, send them a message directly, talk with them directly. You want them really in, in your closest knit direct communication place. So you might offer them exclusive music. You might offer them a chance to listen to a song before it comes out. You might say, I'm getting it, I'm giving something special to these people. And, and basically they join an email list or your text list or somewhere where you can direct communication with them, right? Very, very easily. And you might say, I have direct communication on, on TikTok. No, you don't. You, you don't have direct communication on any algorithm. Uh, this video I'm making to my couple thousand subscribers here on YouTube, it's probably only gonna show it to, you know, 500 of them, right? It's not going to show it to everybody. And so you don't want to rely on an algorithm. So picking the right platforms and then also, you know, getting it down to where you're as direct with them as possible, where you have a good open rate like email or text and you can send messages, send messages to them and you know that they have a great chance of opening it is where you want to start out with, with um, getting into step number three. So step number three is creating a music offer. Okay, so just to review, you chose the right markets alongside your streaming or getting your music out there. You now, you've been creating um, a music um, audience by choosing the right platforms. Now you want the music offer in this direct music sales to be as good as possible. And so at the end of the day, you're selling music, okay? Your music is a product. That's why there's catalogs that sell for hundreds of million dollars, right? Music is a product. That's why artists um, are bought out because they have music that makes them money every single month and there's merch associated. But at the end of the day, it's music that you're selling. So you want to, you have to make a really good offer for people to buy your music and then you have to price it accordingly. They're going from listening to music for free to now purchasing music from you. And maybe it's not music, but this is your music offer. You could have 
uh, merch, create a, fr a free merch shop. This could be physical that sends out to them. You could create digital downloads or sample packs or uh, license to your music. If you're more in the producer space, that works really well. If you're more in the singer songwriter, you just have people that like to listen on Spotify and you have good lyrics and things like that. You might do something like uh, pay $1 or $20 to access my new song before it comes out or three songs I will never release. Or you might create an offer in, in just a, a copy that they buy that is access to future concerts or a digital concert. You can sell out a digital concert. That's happening with a lot of artists that I'm working with right now, kind of in our like portfolio of artists that we work with in the, the labels that we work with. Um, I'm seeing that the digital concerts are becoming really um, kind of this buzz. It's becoming something that fans want to purchase. I didn't expect that, but that's pretty cool. And so you have music offers you create. Creating music offers means that you first have an audience, right? So you, you're in the right market, you got platforms and you've built, you're building an audience. I don't care if you only have a hundred audience or you have a hundred thousand audience, but create a music offer because that'll allow you to monetize your music and, and do it much better than any of these streaming platforms. And then you direct that audience with that direct communication to this music offer that you've created. You can do it. Uh, if you want to go nitty gritty and really get it down to business, you could do things like email automation that promotes your music offer. You can use a Shopify store or research some of the best platforms to sell your music. Right now, I've seen um, even.biz is a place that kind of looks interesting. I think they take 20% of your sales though. So there's something to think about. Uh, but there's like, there's different places you can sell the music directly and you want to try and keep 100%, but also know you're going to make more money by going with a platform that's going to make you more money. Ultimately, like if it's a high converting, it's beautiful and it's already designed to sell music, you're going to sell more music because that's what they do. They help artists sell music. So think about that in your direct to consumer offer. Uh, but th those are things that like when I was thinking about the steps that were hardest and transitioning a mindset from like streaming to direct music sales. To me, that was a hard part. So hopefully, you know, this video is valuable for you. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. And if you did hit that like button, helps us to be able to grow and help other uh, music entrepreneurs, producers, artists, business owners. So I uh, would love to help this video grow and leave your comment down below if you have any. See you guys in the next video. Peace out.